For centuries, mankind has been fascinated with realms outside of our conscious awareness. Through a series of interviews with practitioners, guest speakers, and experts, Liberate the podcast covers all that and more, from health and holistic healing to the supernatural. We aim to educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. and welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today I have a very special guest for you. He's one of our own, Julian. Um, been a member of our team for what, about, a, about a year now or so. Yeah, close to it. And he's just been emanating this positive energy. Uh, he's very an eclectic healer. Uh, he uses, he does readings, healings, and a very interesting, interesting modality called the five elements of the mind. And that's where we're going to be focusing on. But you know how these episodes go. Sometimes we weave off a little to the left, a little to the right. But <laughs> uh, Julian, do you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Julian. Um, I've been reading and healing for the past six years. Um, you know, spirituality came to me probably in my 30s when I met my spiritual teacher, Lise Maria. Um and she just emanated this energy that I had no idea what it was. And so the same energy that you emanate now. Uh, maybe. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> so I walked into her room and went over classes and every, you know, she, everything she said just made sense to me, even though I didn't fully understand it. And I just kept on coming and seeing her and seeing her. And she used the five elements of mind on me. She's done readings with, on me. And um, she always told me I was going to do this work. Uh, but when my intu intuition was going to kick in, it was going to kick in really hard. And, you know, me being um, anxious, I'd always be like, when's it going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't realize that through processing your emotions, your conflicts in your life, is that when things open up and you can start getting to that knowing of the soul. The sowing of the null, the sowing of the null, the knowing of the soul that, you know, knows how to work through uh, different parts of your life so that you could uh, work on your life path with more efficacy because... Uh, there's no conflict because the conflict's there, but you're slicing through it so quickly that it doesn't feel like conflict and life is just fun And oh. that's where I got to or I'm getting to I'm there's always more to work on but so but I, do I would reading. say that you know out of and I'm not just saying this but mm -hmm. there's a out of I Know a lot of people and I would have to say that you really do kind of emanate that level of just happiness and contentment with life and joy and things don't seem to bother you like they do <laughs> <laughs> like you know what I mean? yeah yeah you don't stress or obsess about things like uh, i see that a lot of people do you know and so maybe it is this technique maybe it is this this knowing and this this way to approach life so is this something that you learned through the five elements of the mind yeah it was definitely the five elements of mind because um <laughs> if you met me six years ago i was not like that <laughs> i internalized everything i felt like a little mess but um, what happened was um, I learned how to just be and it's being by when something comes up I'll be like, okay, I check in because there's five uh, Processors in the five elements mind. It's your ego your mental processor your body your emotions and your soul And when you feel stuck on your life path, it's because one of those might be acting up or they're not on the same page You know, mm -hmm. so you're like the president of the government Which is so beautiful because no matter what's going on in the emotions and everything else the soul knows how to work with it and what mm -hmm. I do during the, uh, the process and what, how it was taught me is that there's always a way. There's always a way to get out of the conflict. There's always a way to get out of the sadness, um, out of, um, you know, uh, the shame. It was a lot of shame for me. I mean, for me, it was just processing a lot of shame because growing up gay, you know, you're taught you're, you're wrong. You're not. So it was a lot of that that was going on that I needed to come to to actually be OK with myself and to love myself. Um, and that's what we're doing. We're creating a self-loving identity, uh, meaning a, a, a process, so kind of like a, a process of loving yourself through all these different conflicts. And it's, it seems scary and, at first. And what is that process? Like if we back it up a little yeah. bit, you know, so uh, that some people might be like, okay, I, I kind of get it. Or maybe they're a little like overwhelmed. So yeah. I mean, is this... Is this so let's take it back to the beginning a little bit, you know, so when you're looking at this, is this, is this a step-by-step -step process? Is it, what's the, the technique? Okay. You know, yeah. So you have these five different <laughs> elements of you. Yeah. And I, I think I get, I get that. There's these aspects of yourself yes. that, that interplay. But what is the process of like kind of moving beyond or this? Like if you were taking me through a session, what would it be like? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Sorry. I know. I forget that. I know this stuff. So explaining it to people, I have to go a little bit slower. 
Um, so basically, you'll come to me for a session and I'll say, what do you want to work on? Or I don't know is a perfectly valid answer. So if you don't know, whatever's supposed to come up will come up. So let's say you come in, you're like, oh, I want to work on abundance. So then I'll be like, okay, uh, I'll just talk to you and be like, oh, what's abundance mean to you and this and that. And I'll kind of get like a little hits of like, okay, there seems like there's some fear here or whatever. So let's just see what the ego has to say or what are your beliefs about abundance? So we'll open up five pillows all around you and you're going to move through each processor like physically. So it's actually out on a three, three dimensional space. So the ego... I'll get you in the right place to experience your ego. So it's experiential. So because it's experiential, that means it's subconscious because subconscious is your experiences. Mm -hmm. And then I dig through that way by going through the conscious by talking and let you, letting you know that the beliefs and the ego speak in beliefs. So when you speak about it, I want you to say, I believe. So you're going to say, I believe abundance uh, happens after I do a lot of hard work. Let's mm -hmm. say that's what you say. And then I'll be like, okay, and then where did you learn that? You're like, I believe, you know, my parents struggled a lot, so and so and so forth, something like that. It seems like he's reading me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> totally not reading, well, maybe, I don't know. Uh, wasn't planned. Um, so then from there, um, you know, I'll get as much information as I can, you know, and we're, we're understanding it. The ego gets a bad rap because the ego is not against you. Sometimes it feels like way, but somehow there was a belief in place to make you feel safe. So then we go to the mental and we ask mental processor, can you help me with this? And you move, you move pillows. You physically move, move to the next okay. pillow. And then you're like, yeah. And then you're like, okay, what? And the, the language of the mental process is assumptions. So you either say, I assume or I think. And then the mental processor, and it's also experience. I get you into a state where we experience what the mental processor feels like. So let's say for you, an um, example might not be reading you, is that the mental processor is going crazy feeling really busy trying to find money, trying to make things work, and this and that. And it's like, well, I assume that um, abundance is hard work. Let's mm -hmm. say that's what that's what you assume. And so I get as much as I can from there. And then I'll be like, well, wh why is this hard work? And then you're like, because, um, you know, my father always struggled with money and it always scared me because there was a lot of arguments. So I'm like, ding, fear. That's, mm -hmm. what I, that's what I would assume. And then so we ask the body. So each time you're kind of like getting the more information from each processor. So we go to the body. The body is great because it's all about sensation. You don't really necessarily have to know because the body is very intelligent. So then we go to the body and say, body, can you help me with, you, with, with this? And you move again. And then in the body, you'll say, through sensation, and I'll do another meditation to get you into your body, through sensation, where's the fear? And then you'll be like, Oh shoot, I feel it. It's I feel it in my gut. It's in my gut. So, you know, and your gut could be around second chakra, your root chakra, that's all about survival. So maybe that's where you picked it up from. So let's experience, let's experience that. I connect with the sensation and then you express in words in a conscious state like what this is about. So maybe it's all like I'll never have enough. I'm never going to have enough. Um, you know, and all this stuff comes up like and you're you're just talking and I'm like, "Okay, you're never you're never going to have enough, but why?" And then you'll say um, because it's just too hard. So mm -hmm. there's like a hopelessness, let's say. So then we go to the emotions and let's experience the hopelessness because that's what's blocking you right now. So let's, let's express it because it just needs to clear up that energy. So we go to the emotions and I get you again into another state uh, of feeling and experience the emotions. And then you experience the emotions. And once you get there, like you release it and maybe you can't do all of it in the emotions, but that's okay. And then you ask, and it could either be through crying or through, you know, talking, you know, whatever, just expressing it as well. Uh, we go to the soul and we ask the soul, soul, can you help me with this? And the language of the soul is knowing. So whether it's subconscious, unconscious or conscious, you're going to feel a shift in energy. Sometimes the knowing comes as I'm already abundant mm -hmm. um, because the soul knows that and that there's nothing that I have to do to be abundant. It's already there. So that kind of thing, and it's shifting the energy, and usually it works from the left side to the right side, um, as far as like energetically, and then the soul works with it, and you get what you get. And sometimes if you're stuck in the soul, though, you could even ask for the super consciousness for, for help, and you could connect and get as much as you can. And then so what happens is, from that you're getting new consciousness mm -hmm. of how to work. So then you share it, and you go backwards, and you go, emotions, can I share this with you? Body, can I share this with you? Ego, can I share with this with you? I'm sorry, mental, can I share this with you? Ego, can you can I share this with you? And then you're processing the consciousness and sharing all this information with all these different parts. So they're like, oh, okay, I get it. I don't have to do this on my own. And there's support for me. 
And then from there you come back, you close down the five elements and people stack the pillows however they want. Sometimes they put the soul on top, sometimes, depending on what they're going through. And they're basically bringing the composite of their personality, of their mind back together, and they could use it on their life path. And I've experienced this where I worked on something and immediately in like a week, I hit that again. And the, it's, that's the universe saying like, okay, let's test that muscle that you got, that you learned and work through this conflict. And it happens like two or three times and then after that, they'll be like, okay, you learned that lesson. Let's move on. Mm. And so that's kind of how it works. I hope that makes sense to people out there. <laughs> well, I, I feel like, you know, uh, you know just to give a, a few, few analogies, it's like you're, you're cleaning out and you're experiencing and feeling and then you're replacing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like when you, when you dig a hole, if you don't fill it with something, it, the universe will just fill it automatically with whatever. <laughs> so yeah. you're actually going through that process. And for those that are listening that maybe this seems a little out there for you or you're not fully understanding, think about the power of release. Mm -hmm. Like when you, you know, many times in all different belief systems, sometimes people say like if you have something that is literally eating at you or mm -hmm. whatnot and uh, about a conflict or something that you haven't said to somebody in your family in your love life or whatever sometimes you just need to speak it mm -hmm. and you know there's in many different belief systems there's like that writing that letter yeah you know writing that letter and just getting it out or going and having that conversation and how instantaneously in that moment that that person finishes and the pen goes down or they send that letter or they have that conversation it's like a weight just lifts off of them Totally. And, and so it's like the, this power of, of releasing and allowing your emotions to be expressed. And sometimes that's the healing pop, you know, in itself, yeah. right? Yeah. And then, you, and then you're replacing it with what it should be instead. Not mm -hmm. should or shouldn't. There's nothing that's right or wrong. But you know what I mean. Yeah, totally. What I love about the five elements is because uh, you're working through these things. Maybe it's, um, you know, with a group of people or other people, interpersonal, intrapersonal. It all works the same way because... How you treat other people, some to some degree, you're treating yourself that way. Oh, so, I would say to all. Oh people. yeah, no, for sure. And then sometimes you don't know, but maybe it's your ego, you know, getting all um, inflated and telling the mental process that you're stupid and you didn't know that was happening. So you treat other people that way, like they're inferior. Yeah, I always say that that's the biggest. The biggest mirror is the reflection of how you are to another, mm -hmm. right? You know, I don't think I've ever seen somebody that authentically loves their self being mean and cold to another person. But people that have a lot of self-hatred, those are like the, that, you know, bullies in school syndrome and things like that. Yeah. You know what I'm, I'm saying? So you can really kind of look at where are you? How are you relating to mm -hmm. others as this reflection? Totally. And the thing is about like bullies and stuff, what I love, what I learned about doing the five elements is because... Uh, I have com you get compassion from that okay. because you get so much understanding of how you're working. You're like, wow, if I feel like this about myself, imagine how they must feel about themselves. Exactly. So that's where like I'm like, and that's where like you know these light bulbs come up, and you're like, oh, after three years of doing this work, I'm like, I'm starting to get it. And it took that long. It took like three years of really working hard on myself. Um, with the help of others and healer, other healers, of course. Well, I mean, think. We have, you know, all of these years of stacked belief systems, mm -hmm. you know, and like, how hard is it for somebody that has lived at a, a at the same house for 30 years of their life, per se, yeah. to pack up all of their things and move? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. like it, it's a little bit of a lot of things to go yeah. through, a lot of things yeah. to organize, to decide, do I throw this away, do I keep this? Yeah. And if our mind is the same way through all of our experiences... Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, I'd probably be like, let me just move and leave everything here. Let me have a garage sale. Everybody take everything. <laughs> and some people get to that point where they just, you know, they're, they're, you know, and I'm, I'm sure you've seen people oh, of, of all different dynamics where there's some people that hold on and then they really value some of the, the, the things of their past and even the negative, they're, they're still holding on for that secondary gain. Yeah. But then there's people that are just like, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I just want a blank slate. I want to move forward. I want to leave the past behind. And you yeah. can probably and see tremendous change happen. Of course. It, but it's really hard, you know, because we all have attachments. And that's what it is. And it's really hard to detach from our world, this world, like this plane. Am I getting too far out there? <laughs> yeah, you know, people, are, people are tuning in. Yeah. They're, 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 you know. Uh, well, so talk to me a little bit about some of the um, 
most challenging experiences that you've had doing the five elements of the mind <laughs> with people and maybe some of the most like uh, memorable as far as like you just seeing them transform yeah um, it's funny let's see I have uh, one client who uh, she was working through a lot of trauma she had like growing up that she was not wanted as a baby she was, and you know and that was seen through the growing up process and like we went through many sessions over and over and there was so many aspects and we worked on let's say father material or mother material over and over but each time was a different layer so it felt like it was like this again this again but then you keep on going and then you find out that you know she's a, a healer and she kind of signed up for these lessons on her life and so she was kind of stepping into her own um, by learning all these different things and you know she um, started to uh, she manifested you know a job for herself she manifested um, you know just a better life you know love and all that good stuff and she was able to you know forgive her parents and her family and um, you know she's in a really good place now and it was just through processing and working and honestly through five elements you never know where it's gonna go she had, we actually had to do some past life work which you could actually do in the five elements um, that because if it comes up it's comes up and you have to deal with it and you have to work on it you know it's yeah. coming up for a reason um, but yeah I guess she would be an amazing success story which this is this it sounds weird this is a success story because I haven't seen her in a long time so to me, that means like she's learned how to kind of deal with all this stuff on her own. She doesn't really need me to facilitate because at the end of the five elements of mind, it's just teaching your mind how to be so that you're already looking for the patterns. You're looking for the triggers. You're you're already like doing the work on yourself because that's my goal. I don't want you to be dependent on me. I want you to be able to take this and use it for yourself in the end and just yeah. live your life and, and like, be happy. And like you're saying, you can just cut through now. Yeah. It's like almost like taking it and seeing a higher perspective. Yeah. You know, like looking looking at a higher view of a map or seeing it in a different way. And yeah. suddenly it seems a lot easier. Mm -hmm. When you're like, okay, I'm just in that. Yeah. Or this is just going on because this is what's it. And then you're not attached to it. Mm -hmm. And you can move beyond it. Yeah. And people don't affect you either because you've realize the patterns in yourself now and you could be, have compassion for them. You're like, oh, they're just going through their sudden return or whatever, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so what about a challenging one where like somebody had strong attachments that even know that they're showing up because that, that, that's the thing I think that people should really be aware of. There's, there's people that come in that really want that change and transformation. And then there's people that come in and they just say they want it. Yeah. You well, know. here's the thing. When that happens, you can't really do anything for them because they have to do the work themselves. And then at one point, at some point, you know, I have to just be like, I can't help you. And that's why I love having a um, a, a group of healers that I know that I could always refer. Because if I can't help them, I want to make sure I find somebody. I don't want to leave them out on the dust. So yeah. I'll refer them to somebody. So that's kind of what I do when people don't want to do the work because maybe I'm just not the right healer for them, which is okay. I don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> It's, a, it's beautiful. You get to that place of no ego attachment. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. And then also like, you know, five elements is, is great. But, you know, I'm also uh, a multifaceted healer. So I use other things. I've used five elements and Akashic, five elements and, you know, Lenormand, five elements and energy healing. Because a lot of people don't know about uh, the five elements of mind is you sometimes you can't work because you're so exhausted and tired. And if your body is not, you know, ready and to work then you can't get past and especially if you're disassociated from your body you can't work in the five elements because you have to be present and you have to be here so sometimes I say like okay we got to stop nothing's happening let me give you a healing and which is great because from my teacher Lisa Maria um, she I studied medical qigong so I know how to balance organs and and do those kind of things and chakras and energy clearing um, and Reiki and all that good stuff and it all works together so there's never one modality that is right yeah. They're all, you know, and we all know this. Yeah, there's always something for that. But to be multifaceted and be able to know which ones for that right time is very helpful in five months of mind to make sure it works. Yeah, and I think that that's so good. Is you know, and I've I've spoke on this before, but the power of allowing 
yourself to study so many different things mm-hmm. because you know what I think that's the same in life outside of the healing and being able to serve clients mm-hmm. like if people allow themselves to look at different perspectives and learn more mm-hmm. they're just more prepared for life in general right yeah if somebody knows a little bit about cars and a little bit about computers and a little about the, this they can get through a little bit more it doesn't mean mm-hmm. that they have to be an expert at everything but they can pull in those different facets of how to adapt and how to move through anything that comes and throws at them in life and so if a client comes in and you know one modality isn't resonating Mm -hmm. well you just pull in some different tools and techniques and mix it up a little bit and bada bing bada boom (laughs) bada bing bada boom and then yeah i agree and i hope that they learn the tools and then they use them in their life you know and that's what it is it's your own toolbox we all have the power to heal ourselves i truly believe that it's just we all need help and it's okay to ask you know Yeah. That's a, that's one thing that I really see is that people it's okay to ask, mm-hmm. right? You know, so so many people have shame or what does this mean? Does this mean I'm weak? Does this mean I have this or mm-hmm. this or that? But that's why we're collaborative like human beings that at their essence you know go back in history we're pactual beings yeah we're meant to like this person might advance and and be a little bit better at this and this person might be better at that and together Mm -hmm. if we work together we create this collaborative society that we can continue to evolve and i think that that's probably the number one reason why humanity still exists (laughs) yeah (laughs) right yeah is it because we're not we're not the fastest Mm -hmm. we're not the strongest in but it's our ability to work together that has allowed us to overcome Mm -hmm. many of the different challenges of environmental threats or or predators and all of that stuff yeah because we collaboratively come together Mm -hmm. and so it's okay to say hey i might need some support here Mm -hmm. or i don't know can you help me i don't know i love i don't know because it's it's (laughs) honest it's the most honest thing you could say when you're stuck like i don't know okay let's find out Let's yeah. help. Let's work. Let's work yeah, together. Yeah, and if somebody needed, if somebody needed some, if they didn't, they're not a, if somebody's not an attorney and they need some legal stuff, mm-hmm. they would probably say, okay, this is beyond my scope. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> I, need, I, I need some help writing yeah. this contract, you know. Yeah. And it's no different when you're coming and getting a healing or perspective of, you know, reframing your your thought process mm-hmm. and you know a little bit like therapy mm-hmm. with you know spirituality it's it's no different would you agree yeah no it's actually funny now now you just reminded me of something so when i was working with my teacher i always thought for some reason in my mind it might be because it was hard for me to express who i am as and so i tried to do everything internal so people wouldn't have to get to know me so i thought i could figure everything out on my own and then i told my teacher i was like um I need, I, I was all like, I have to do, I can do this on my own. She's all like, honey, if you could have done this on your own, you would have done it already. So let me help you. And I was like, oh, okay. I get it. I get it. You can't do it on your own. You, you're not supposed to do it on your own. Yeah. And even in the case for those people that think they still can, yeah, sometimes you can do, do some things on your own, but yeah. how long is it going to take you and how much effort? Do you, <laughs> you want to sit here for 10 years or do yeah. you want to just be done with it and yeah. move on to something else? Let's be happy. <laughs> Let's be happy and excited for life. <laughs> you know, if somebody can be of support, you know, and, and help with some certain module, it's like in business, if, if you have like... Yeah, you could do all of the facets, but you're probably only going to do them to some limited capacity. But if you enroll somebody that, okay, they do marketing and this person does this and this person, you know, deals with HR, then the company can rise, right? It's like one person is only limited, you know, and it would take them that much longer. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And so the question is, do you want to wait a long time? Or do you want to just get it, get it over? Let's, yeah, let's end that suffering. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, man. Uh-huh. So great. So great. What about, what else about uh, the five elements of mind? Um, I don't know. What do you like, want to like, know? Like, you know, where did, where did it come from? You know, oh, like, okay. let's, let's learn a little bit more about where does this process come from. Oh for, my God. To, for me, I'm like, I, I'm an NLP uh, certified trainer and different things like that. 
Um, and I look at it as a, it kind of feels like parts integration. Totally, yeah. And so I don't know if anybody's familiar with that, but you, you do this whole process of taking all of the parts of yourself and integrating them in one mm -hmm. because uh, it, and so this seems like it's that on steroids. Yeah. Because you actually <laughs> move to these different locations instead of just the two hands out and kind of collapsing them. Totally. Um, okay, let me give you a little background. Um, my teacher, Lisa Maria, uh, she actually learned, uh, she built upon uh, Dr. Nancy Ann Tappy. She's a color theorist and synthesate. Um, she was a wonderful medium as well. She channeled about the color children, indigo children, and all that stuff. Um, so she had the mind, is it the mind spirit paradigm. So the mind and spirit are connected. So what my teacher did, Lise Maria, she saw that and she was all like, if the mind and spirit are connected, there's a way to map the consciousness from the mind to the spirit. So what she did is she used her own, um, I guess, alchemical process of emotions, energy, and she found out that, you know, the mind is composed of the mental, the body, the emotions, and the soul. And she in incorporated the soul, and that's where it kind of changes and turns into something more spiritual, because the soul has always been there. And so that's how it kind of came about to be, and she worked on it uh, for the rest of her life, actually. Um, she passed away three years ago. Oh. Um, and there's a handful of us that know it in LA that know how to use the five elements of mind and I'm one of them I kind of became the custodian of the work so that's why I'm so uh, adamant about bringing it out to the world because it helped me so much and I know it's real so that's why um, I wanted to do that for her uh, it's part of a promise that I made to her um, because she's helped me so much because honestly six years ago I would never thought I would be talking to you about spirituality <laughs> i was having a good time but kind of producing a lot of shame if you know what i mean um but yeah so it came from dr nan tappy's mind spirit paradigm my uh teacher lisa maria she um built upon that and created this way to map the consciousness through the mind and you know she incorporated she was a um a keto master a middle qigong master she was an acupuncturist uh, a healer a channel and a medium so she used all of those to integrate these together there's actually a bigger picture for the five elements of mind that she created which was a human potential handbook which um, i'm in the process of um, getting ready to publish and put put out there for her um, but it incorporates like um the five elements of mind but also different um uh, Chinese medicine uh, modality healing things that you could also do to incorporate to make things better um, to make the process a lot more easier uh, her dream was to have like a triptych kind of like the Louise Hay type of triptych but also like with the five elements mind you'd be like okay I'm feeling this so maybe I could do these exercise medical qigong exercises along with these herbs or this meditation so hopefully that'll come out soon one day um, uh, very soon we'll yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah so that's kind of the background of where it came she channeled it and from and built upon dr nancy on tappy's mind spirit paradigm i love it yeah and, and so you're hearing it you know julian's one of the only people that know how to do this and it's a, it seems like the torch has definitely been passed to you um, I'm sure the other practitioners that know how to do it are wonderful, oh amazing, God, amazing too. But yeah. this is like you're like her prodigy. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, like you're you're gonna be releasing the book, and you're kind of taking this into making sure that this modality continues to live. Yeah. So I, I would highly recommend it. I mean, it's a powerful thing. I mean, I know the power of. Um, you know the timeline there i mean the parts integration from nlp and which might be a little bit more universally known but this seems like that takes it like i said it makes it that much more yeah like this is a lot further the parts integration is two this is five and you're looking at you know jumping into the soul and you know what an amazing healing transformation that could happen in you know yeah. an hour yeah and when you feel that when anyone experiences the soul, it's just beautiful because it's all love, you know, and you feel that support that sometimes you don't think that you have, but it's always there. You know what I mean? I love that. Yeah. So Julian, uh, tell them, uh, t let them know how, of course, you, you, can, oh. go, you, can, get a, you can get a hold of uh, Julian through Liberate Emporium. You can go to our website, liberateemporium.com, uh, contact us, and you can schedule something with him that way. Um, Julian, where else can they find you? Oh, yeah. Um, I am also on juliansombrano.com. That's J-U-L-I-A-N-S-A-M-B-R-A-N-O.com. Uh, that's my website. You can schedule also healings, uh, anything of that sort, um, or readings. But, um, yeah.
Yeah, really good. Truly, truly a blessing, and I hope everybody gets a chance to meet him. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us, and tune in next week. Bye.